There is no parallel. There is no parallel. The, we are not uh, an armor force organization. We are a structured organization. We are governed by rules, and these are rules that represent the, 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 the contract, you know, amongst uh, between members of the All Progressive Congress. Imo, uh, not too good news for today, but not surprising. They have to learn to begin to comply with rules. Uh, they have two fake results. Uh, we adopted both fake results. None of them is genuine. And we will conduct, we will disband, uh, uh, we, we, we will uh, appoint a fresh uh, committee, electoral panel, that will conduct a transparent, direct primaries that reflect the will of members of APC in Imo State, regardless of the interests and the powers that are behind any of the group. The truth does not require a supporters club to stand. It has its leg, it has its head. And we, we will do just that. Everything that will be done is done under the control and supervision and directions of the NWC. Welcome back to Sunrise. They were yes, indeed, we are focusing on the Imo State APC governorship primaries. Different perspective to this. You heard, uh, you may have read the account of uh, uh, Ahmed Golak, who happened to be the chairman of that uh, Imo State governorship primaries committee for the APC. You heard that of the chairman of the party. But now, let's find out from uh, residents, those who were there, the stakeholders in the state, what exactly transpired. Why are we where we are today? Well, this morning we've got uh, Theodore Ikechi, who was the, uh, is also a key stakeholder of the, you, you call yourself the allied team or allied members. Why allied? No, no, no. I, I prefer to be identified simply as the convener of the Emo APC Restoration Coalition. What happened to the allied group? Well, allied group is a kind of an um, AKA. AKA. <laughs> this is the AKA of this particular group. It's AKA. We're actually the, res we're actually the coalition the coalition against impunity in most states. That's a better name for it. But now, it appears as though what happened yesterday, or what is said to have happened yesterday, was an impunity, wasn't it, about the primaries being conducted? Well, what, what happened yesterday for everybody, who, every keen observer, is not different from what happened at the World Congress that took place in most State. It wasn't different from what happened at the local government Congress. It wasn't different from what happened at the state Congress. It was also not different from what happened at the National Convention, where before National Network Television, in the full glare of the entire National APC, while the President was giving an address at the National Convention, we saw what happened. We saw how the Governor of Imo State mm -hmm. walked in in a, in a kind of Nazi Gestapo style with over 150 talks and dislocated everybody while the conversation so was going why on. then did the chairman of the party say there were two fake results they're going to disband the committee set up another committee and then conduct a proper election or primaries that will give the yearnings of all st of stakeholders in emo apc let me start by saying that i'm very shocked at the statement of the, by the national chairman and uh, it is not in my character i don't even have the capacity to join issues with the national chairman but I think the general chairman must have acted on the basis of the information that are available to him. But it's very important for us to educate Nigerians that what happened really in Imo State was the primary was initially scheduled for Saturday, postponed to Sunday, Sunday to Monday. With the inset of the panel, I don't think that any of us has any personal relationship with Gulak, a former presidential advisor. It was the National Working Committee, in their own wisdom, that appointed Gulak the chairman of the electoral panel. Oh, and some, place, yes, it did. And some other 11 members of, of the panel, they came to Imo State. Elections took place. Elections were conducted. Results were being announced as they were coming in. Check the social media. By 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Monday, the governor's own state media, own state media, and all their social media accounts were announcing that his son-in-law was leading in 22 states by 3 a.m. Tuesday morning 
the same governor had announced that elections had been cancelled. What election? By, by, by 10 p.m., your son-in-law was leading in 22 states. By 3, 3 a.m. the next day, election had been cancelled. So, now, by 2 p.m., you have yeah. sworn in your son-in-law, declared him the lead winner no, of the Congress. If a Congress never, if a, a primary election never took place, how did you come about all these dramas? Okay, now you say the primary is held, but what time did they hold, and when was this result you're referring to come up? Okay, let, let me say this to you, and this is all frankness. I was one of those who were holed up, or let me say hold in and held up, restricted movement in hotel accommodation because we were running for our dear lives. So, but of course, from the hotel where I was, like so many other key stakeholders, you monitor what was happening. The five-man fuel panels were also appointed, not by us, they were sent from Abuja. And they had gone into the field to conduct other elections. By 3 p.m., the chairman and his team has gone to brief the governor about the progress of the elections. That briefing took place before the media in Imo State. Later on, they had stakeholders meeting where the, gov where the chairman co confirmed that voting, that is the process of voting, the process of the election, will continue to the next day. Now, when, and when the did process start? continued. When did this start? The election was started around, I think, between that 2 p.m. or thereabout. The election has started. Don't mix up the panel that came from Abuja and the five-man panel that have to go to the field. Those names were not made up by us. Those names were submitted to them in Abuja and sent to Owere. And don't forget that it is the governor's own boy and crony that must have prepared all this because he is the National Working Commission, so National Organizing Secretary of the Party. Which meeting did uh, Ahmed Gulak hold by 10 p.m.? Continuous briefing. Continuous, continuous briefing? Yes. But in that continuous briefing, why was he telling people that uh, by, by 6 6 a.m. or was it 6 p.m. that they needed to gather and then before you knew what was going on at about 7 results were out so at 7, point, 7 p.m. yeah at what point 7 a.m. at 7 what point were these results announced that's what I'm asking the results were announced you know the typical thing the moment the governor saw that the results that no not, not the, the, no, the, the results by Ahmed Gulak yes, I'm, going, I'm going to make a point to you by the time he realized that the results were not going in the direction that he wanted in the same style that he did in the primary, sorry, in the congresses, they went physically to kidnap members of the electoral panel at Rockview Hotel. It is no secret. What time was this? That was around, uh, I think, around uh, 4 or 5 a.m. Between 4 or 5 a.m. You can put him online and hear from him. He went to kidnap them. And by that time, they had finished the compilations of the results. And they announced the result. You said he announced, they announced results by 3 p.m. You know, it can't be 3 p.m. What? I think I 4 or 5, 4, 5 a.m. The next day being Tuesday. They had announced 4, results. 5 a.m., about 5 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., the next day being Tuesday. The governor went to the hotel physically to kidnap them. Why did he go there if there were no compilations going on? Why did he go there with truck load of policemen if there were no results being turned in? He saw it wasn't going his way. What was he discussing with Gulak and his team in government house for how many hours that he held them there? What were the discussions? Perhaps he had not, was not able to influence them to take the decision to to tell the line that he wanted to he wanted them to take. Okay. All right. So the the questions about timing, what exactly happened? As I went you. So sure. before we we'll go a little further, so we we'll, we'll get a direct response now. Let's go to Abuja. Ajuri. Thank you, Chamberlain, and welcome back to Abuja. I will be speaking this morning with the special advisor to the Imo State Governor, Rochas Okorocha, on electoral matters, Mr. Steve Asimobi. You're very welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Ajuru. You've heard the account of Mr. Ekechi. Can you go ahead and uh, share with us what your response is? It is most unfortunate that um, a man like Tio Ekechi, who was sacked by Rochas as Commissioner for Information, could so blatantly change the a narrative of something that is very, very, very clear. I'm, I'm, I'm personally very disappointed with you. He's my friend. And we've been on your, on your TV station for quite an, a couple of times. Now, let me give Nigerians an update of what actually transpired in Imo State. On Monday, the guys from Abuja, the committee members and their chairman, arrived in Imo Airport at about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. They were received by the state chairman of the party at the, at the airport, which, was, which is in keeping with 
what should normally happen. From the airport, they proceeded because other members insisted, according to the state chairman, that other members insisted that in view of what had happened in Imo in the past, where senator, one senator ran away in Yokoli, ran away with resources, they insisted that they should take the materials to the state police commissioner who was brought in from Kogi State as an election commissioner to midwife this process.